Hi everybody, welcome to part two of the Caterpillar D13000 generator set project. Uh, the title of this video is going to be uh, Assessment. Uh, I'm going to take off a couple of basic components of the engine, uh, try to get an understanding of what the problem is and what is going to need to be done to the unit to get it back to operating condition. A um, couple things I've done already, you can see right up front, let me zoom in there. I was just curious, pulled off, uh, there's a large contactor here. That's the uh, original starter solenoid, if you will, starting contactor for the starter motor. And right above it to the uh, left is a pressure switch, which... It looks like it was connected for or to be an alarm uh, for you know wherever this unit was installed if the unit was to go into low oil pressure for whatever reason. Uh, also the starter itself, the Delco, the 50MT, uh, is a 32 volt starter or at least the solenoid is 32 volt. I've come across that before where uh, a starter will have a one voltage solenoid but the the system itself will be a different voltage but got a 32 volt starter solenoid on it so I'm gonna guess that the starter motor itself is 32 volt as well so let me uh, take you off the tripod and get to work here okay well I've removed the starter uh, I removed the uh, oil pressure switch and uh, all the bolts holding the rear inspection cover on I'm thinking that it's the number four cylinder that's uh, causing the engine to be stuck since that's the exhaust port that has the evidence of rust or water intrusion so go ahead and see if I can pop that cover off Oh, it smells like an old engine. Mm. Ooh, let's take a look in there. Let's see here. I think it is this cylinder right here that's stuck. Oh, that looked rusty. Kind of rusty to me. What do they all look like? Oh, there's a piston. That one looks good. That's the bottom of the stroke. How's this one look? You can't really see. Well, I can. Looks pretty good up there. There's a camshaft right above our head there. Oil line. Yeah, but that looks definitely that definitely looks rusty to me. Let's see if I can reach in there. There's the rod. Follow the rod up. Ah, uh, yeah. Eh. Let's see. Yeah. That feels pretty rusty. Hmm. Feels pretty rusty. The lower end doesn't look bad though. Normal sludge. Hmm. Some oil down there. Alright. Let's move on to the uh pulling off the rocker covers or the rear rocker cover. Alrighty, well I pulled the uh, three nuts off the studs that hold the rocker cover down and after a little bit of chiseling on the old cork gasket it looks like it's ready to lift off. Uh, or not. Ah. Uh. One of the 
injector nuts is keeping it down. Let's see here. Take this line nut off. Get some clearance. That should work. Now the underside of the cover looks good. No rust there. Happy guys. Let's take a look here. I love an engine you can climb up on. So here's our valve gear. Pretty interesting. That oil feed line. It looks okay, really. I mean, what more would you expect from a engine this old? Now you can see the compression release cam back there. Let me operate that. You can see it's rotating down there interesting yeah not all that bad obviously it's gonna need to be all disassembled and cleaned before it can be ran Here's the injector line I had to remove. Better put that back on. Not a big deal. That's all, of course, the whole fuel system is going to have to be taken apart and cleaned and checked. I'm going to pull the front inspection plate now on the uh, block. See what that looks like. All right, now we got uh, both inspection plates and both rocker covers off. Let's take a look at the front three cylinders, or at the lower end, rather. Look okay off the bat. Let's see what we got here. Oh, that one looks a little crummy. Oh uh, yeah. So number three, definitely need uh, some attention. And number two looks good. About number one. Mm, kind of hard to see, but number one looks pretty good as well. See if I can get my hand in there to see what the cylinder wall feels like. Oh yeah, that feels nice and smooth and clean. You can see the size of that rod compared to my fist there. Alright, well, looks like Number three and number four are the culprits here, which makes sense when you think about it, considering uh, those two cylinders are the closest to the exhaust outlet of the manifold, so if there was water coming down the manifold, that's where it would go first. And, you know, they're both a little bit more than halfway up the bore. Hmm. 
Doesn't look like much got down. You can see the the top of this rod throw is a little little not rusty, but there's some dirt there. And the lower end of the rod looks like it's got a little bit of surface rust on it. Doesn't look like anything bad, but let's take a look at the top end there. Get around the other side. Alrighty, so here's the uh, front three cylinders. They look about the same as the rear three. What you'd expect from being 80 years old. <clears throat> a lot of thick sludge. Like I said before, obviously this engine's got to come all apart, or pretty much all apart, so that it can be cleaned. So, but at least I got an idea of what I'm dealing with, and I can start a parts search, or at least start to compile a parts list. If nothing else, probably going to need rings for at least the two center cylinders, three and four there. Probably going to need sleeves for those as well. Hopefully not pistons. We'll have to see what the pistons look like. And uh, yeah, we'll go from there. So the next video is going to be uh, starting the heavy teardown on this engine. Pulling the fuel injection equipment, cylinder heads, pulling pistons and sleeves. So uh, thanks for watching and um, uh, stay tuned for more on this uh, this year. Okay, to finish this video, I just want to show these uh, two Caterpillar uh, books that I've got here. This is the Serviceman's Reference Book, which was printed in 1957. It's an excellent book for this engine. It goes through just about every uh, aspect of um, repair that you could uh, conceive for this unit. Timing gears. Here's one looks like somebody's uh, done a couple cylinder head jobs in the past. You can see the fingerprints all over it. Really great stuff. Governing equipment. If you've got a Woodward, one of the UG8 governors. Don't have, this unit doesn't have that. Great stuff. Injection pump. Work and rebuilding. Excellent. Look at that fuel fuel flow diagram. Caterpillar really did a good job uh, building stuff back then. They still do now. <laughs> Oil pump. Great book for the industrial, electric set, marine, and tractor engines. This is a parts list from 1940 actually quite a bit earlier than that in the uh, service book January 1940 gotta be careful with this one again great uh, great illustrated parts list for this engine everything you could need all of the accessories for all the different variations Good to have all these part numbers, even though a lot of these parts are no longer available, you know, from Caterpillar. Most of them, if not all of them, are no longer available from Caterpillar. I'm sure some of them are. There's an auxiliary water pump. Lots of stuff. Heat exchange. What's that? That's a starting tank for the starting engine. All kinds of stuff. Effective with machine 1N1001. Well, I'm 1N1160. That's my serial number. So, not long after this was, uh, well, actually, this starts with a, a pretty early serial number, and I'm not far off of that. So, these did not come with the unit. Um, my girlfriend Cindy bought these for me. I want to say thank you, Cindy, for picking these up. Found them on eBay, actually. So, uh, and I uh, look forward to having you come out here and work on it with me. All right? Thanks for watching, everybody.